I'm Jimmy Lewis with Dirt Bike Test and today I'm going to show you how to change a moose. Well, I just did the front one. You said, yeah, Jimmy, that was BS because that was a front one and it was way too easy. So this is the rear one and I'm going to actually put a big moose in a Kenda Equilibrium tire so it's a little bit more difficult. Again, totally unscripted. As usual, mooses are a hard job. Changing a moose is a hard job. So I recommend, uh, you know, have a beer. Uh, since it's a hard job, I'm having a bad beer because none of this is fun. And if I'm slurring my words by the end of it, it's because I've done 27 takes of this, right? That's what the internet naysayers will say. And uh, that's why I can't get this done. I just, you know, only put the good one up. But this is only my uh, second take. The first take was, of course, changing the front moose, which you can watch on another video. So, uh, cheers, and I'll get right to it. I will try my best to explain all the steps as we do this. Um, here's my rim. This is an unprepped rim as far as mooses go. Uh, this is the first time it's had a moose on. It actually still has the tubeless uh, logos on it because I took a tubeless off to put the uh, moose in. I'm running a rim lock. This is, the, I think, a 2.15 uh, rim lock on here. And another thing I do, and I'll kind of show this up close to the camera, so the, the rim lock there. This is a valve stem right here, like you would have on a tube. I painted a different color so um, my people know not to uh, try to air it up. But this is the way to pop the bead if you need to. So it's just in here and you can see it just floats in there and sends air in there if I need it. So here's my rim. It doesn't have any lube on it. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do about that in a second. Uh, but here is my Nitro Moose. Make sure you get the right size, by the way. Uh, that's really important in moose uh, life, durability, stuff. You want to make sure you have the right size. Uh, if you are worried about it, uh, check the sizing charts with the companies that make these things. Nitro Moose has a really good sizing chart on their website. They can show you where it's at. So there's my moose. That's a fatty. Here's my stickers uh, and the ever important lube. Evidently, Nitro Moose has a new cooling lube that uh, I don't know anything about. Empty the full tube into the tire and spread it on the inner surface. Hey, you know what? This is the first time I've read the instructions on the new lube, and now they're using my method. That's strange, because <laughs> that's what I do. Uh, I could probably read these instructions uh, to see if there's anything important in there. It says, it says read before installing. I've uh, been doing this for a long time. And like any man, there's no way I'm gonna read instructions. Uh, okay, so uh, this is pretty important, gloves. Um, of course, we're not in a studio. Like I said in the other video, we're not doing this all clean, prim and proper. I got my grubbies on because there's nothing about this job that is clean, uh, for most people especially. Uh, I can get away with it, but I don't like ruining. So I do not lube the moose. Surprise, surprise, I lube the tire. Where's my tire? Here's my tire. So what I do is make sure my tire is clean and this tire's been uh, in a smash stack so it's gonna be even more interesting. So what I do is I take my lube and I put it in the center of the tire and then I spread it around. And for a rear tire, I don't feel that a single tube is generally enough. And I have another one over here that I'm going to add to it, especially a fat rear tire uh, like this. This, uh, I think the equilibrium is a, it's actually a 450 by 18 is the size of this tire, by the way. So if you didn't watch the front tire install, I'm just gonna explain again. I'm putting a nice big fat bead down in the center and then I spread it out a little bit and then I'm gonna come around a second time in a minute and I'm going to Make sure that it gets up on the sidewalls because the spinning rotation of the tire will send it out to the outside of the tire for sure. Um, but you want to make sure it's definitely onto the sidewalls of the tire. So by placing the dry mousse into a fully lubed tire, the majority of the mousse will be lubed. And I'll show you how I'll deal with that center part that's sticking out. Because when you lube the mousse and then place it in the tire, what happens is a lot of the lube gets wiped up into the center of the um, kind of the center of the tire 
the, the part that's essentially right here and it spits out and doesn't really do a whole lot of good. You, you actually knock it off when you're mounting it on the tire. So I have the lube in, in there, all good. Happy with that, done with that. I'm gonna take it and start making sure I, what I do is I take it, rub it on the center of my knuckles and then drag it up onto the side of the tire. So I'll go around one direction and do that, take it from the center, get it way up onto the sidewall, because that's important. And you can actually see it kind of dripping. It is warm out here today, so it runs a little bit easier. Do that on one side, come and do it around on the other side. And it definitely helps when it's warm out. I mean, like I've done this in the winter, and it is difficult to get that stuff to spread out. It doesn't really want to uh, gel out, but make sure everything is all lubed up inside of here. Want to be all nice and good. Okay, feel pretty happy about that. That's prepped up. So my next thing, and I have another tube of lube. It's an older, the older lube that I had a few extras of. And I'm gonna take that and I'm going to put it around here and I'm gonna lube this part up. So that way, when the tire and it smashes the moose up into here, whoa, look at that container just blew up. <laughs> so I got plenty now. So I'll run that stuff around here. Make sure it's all good. So now my rim is lubed up. So any place that that mousse is gonna come in contact with, even though it's dry now, will be lubed up. And I'm gonna, I, I usually will leave the, I sometimes I'll lube it up after I pull, pull the tire on, but since this was brand new, I went ahead and did it now. And here's the technique for, so my hands are super luby. I want to move it out of the way, like there, stay. And now I'm going to put this inside of here. So my technique for this is I like to sit, kind of sit down on the tire. This is a very soft sidewall tire. And I'm just trying to squeeze, get the tire to spread out, and then get the mousse to stick in to the tire. And then I'll roll it and stuff it in there. So sometimes a little bit of a fight, especially when you're mounting it onto a tire like the Equilibrium, which like I said, very soft sidewall. Same thing if you mount it on a Trials tire. The stiff tires actually work a little bit better for getting the mousse. And you can see it not wanting to go in. But that's why I push down, try to get it to spread out. Come on, baby. Ugh. There we go. In. In. In and in. So since it's a big tire, this is a big moose. This is kind of typical of uh, you know when you're putting one in a desert tire. And uh, there we go. It's all in. And I have had essentially factory mechanics <laughs> to do this for me. I've had to do it myself. I've seen the best guys in the world. I've seen them use all the tools. I do have a tire changing stand right here that I could use. There's those tools um, that make this really easy. You know, I tell you about all these tools and the brand names, uh, especially if these companies would like to advertise with Dirt Bike Test. We can talk and maybe you would encourage us to do more videos on your products. But at this point, I'm just going to show you kind of raw how we do it on the ground. So uh, since this one has a sprocket and I don't want to work on the sprocket side, I want to be sprocket side down, I have to look at a motorcycle, see what side of the sprocket goes on, which is this side. I have to look at my tire and see the direction I want it running, which is this way on the equilibrium because I like these little hooks to work on the braking side. And then I take the rim lock. And I'm going to put the tire in here like this and seat the rim lock under the moose. So it's like a hook. So we've got that in there like so. 
and now I want the tire to stay down as much as it can in the dish. I like using a hooked tire iron, and now is where I should get my other gloves, wherever I put those. Where did I put my gloves? I hid them for myself. Oh, they're over there, behind the camera. So wait one second. We're back with gloves. Uh, here we go. This is mostly to save my knuckles, not to keep my pretty hands clean. Again, I want to hook this rim lock up underneath the tire and then use that as the basis to get it to stick in there. And then I'm going to use a hook tire iron. That's really helpful here. I come up from the back side and then I lift the tire onto the rim. On a thick mousse like this, a lot of times I'm going to have to put my foot down here to hold it because this rim literally wants to pop. It doesn't really want to settle on it. So I'm going to start squeezing with my knees and try to find a happy position where I can start crawling this tire onto the rim. There we go, a little bit. And at some point it's going to start settling and that's when I put it down. And this is the, this is the kind of the tricky part. It requires a little bit of balance and technique. I'm going to put it down, grab another tire iron, and then start walking it. And hopefully that tire iron is going to hold the tire in place. So I push, push, and ideally I want to just get that one knee down on this side of the tire. And this is where the machine definitely can help you, but you don't necessarily need it. I don't need to hold it all the way down yet. I just want to get the one side of the tire down onto the rim. So, like that, and like that, and like that, there it goes, so it just popped down. There's enough lube on this tire right now to kind of help it uh, pop on pretty easy. Again, here's where another tricky part comes in. I need to get this tire to go down without popping off the other side of the bead, and when I do this, uh, this is where these curved tire irons really help. I'm going to kind of push down and at this point right here and I want to finish up at the rim lock. That's, that's my technique is finishing up at the rim lock. So I'm going to start a little bit away from it and I'm going to work my way back around. So let me start right about here. I'm going to push this down and here's where you start using some of these sort of special tools. Special as in vice grips. If you're really worried about the prettiness of your rim, your eh, I don't want to say you're not a real dirt bike rider, but you're worried about the prettiness of your rim. And uh, don't use the vice grips, use a special tool, which I'll show you in a second. So now I move over about three or four spokes. I do the same thing, I push it down. And the tricky part here is not losing the bead off the other side of the tire. Sometimes they want to pop back off, and that is not good. And then you're gonna be starting all over again. So I hook that other little special tool that holds the tire back down. I push down here, same thing. I'm gonna go hook another little tool down in here. The purpose of these tools is they, they hook onto a spoke and then hold the tire down on the bead. And as I get farther around it, it'll start pushing the tire all the way down. I didn't take a big enough bite again. Here we go, down. And you wanna make sure when you do this, the tire is going down over the bead or it's useless. Here we go, one more time there. Almost. Uh, I'm going to use, since it's actually starting to get pretty compressed, I'm going to use the other side of the tire so I can get a better bite and push down. Go ahead, I have a vice grip on this one here. Push down, a little bit of adjustment on that, a little tighter, like so. Uh, you may be wondering where did I learn all of these techniques. Uh, years of experience and not from watching all the other gurus on the internet. Uh, when I do watch stuff on the internet, you know, when I'm trying to be a contractor, by the way, I always wonder if that guy really knows what he's doing. <laughs> uh, you're probably wondering the same thing right now, but as you see, this technique will work and I'll make it look a lot easier than a lot of the other guys. So now we're getting to the point where this is, this big thick moose is really starting to play havoc on everything that's going on. But all these tools over here are going to do their job, start pulling the, pulling the bead back down. And 
and the important part is that it does go down into the dish because if it doesn't, you're going to break the bead of the tire and you have a $100 piece of jewelry at that point. So I can watch it kind of come down. And sometimes you want to have a little extra lube on those things. Just depends on the situation. Do I have another hook or tool? I should have one more of these. Yeah. Let's see. Come up here. And like I said, the more tools that you have, make it a little bit easier as you go along. And there's that. Uh, for sure, tire changing stands can help. All kinds of stuff can help. And now is when it comes uh, important to have a lot of different tire irons. And the hooked ones really help in forcing that mousse down into the bead. And I'm going to go start using two at a time and walking with them. And there's a point where I'm going to leave the, the, the previous tire iron down in there in order to hold everything together. So little step here. And the trick is to get little steps so that it slowly starts pulling it down. And this is definitely where a tire changing stand can help and some of the really expensive tools make this a lot easier. And you may be asking yourself, should I have paid somebody to do this at this point? Um, probably. So I'm actually at the rim lock. So now we're, I'm gonna start working over on this other side. I'm gonna start working my way down. Again, push. And I'm not super happy with how the bead is going down on this other side, but I'm going to watch it to make sure it goes down. Again, here, another hook tire iron makes it easy to get it up, easier to get it up underneath the rim. So push and down. Yeah, it just it just dived down in the dish here, which I'm pretty happy about that. And we're getting to the point where it's gonna start making it a little bit easier. So up, over, down. And you can see with the force that I'm using, it's not even enough to flip the tire over. If you're really having to lever on it or have someone stand on the other side, you're probably uh, not doing it just about right. <laughs> so again, over. And here's where it gets tricky. Another tricky spot. So I have the tire almost all the way on. Uh, luckily I haven't broken the bead and now I have to compress the rim lock and what I usually do is I work my way to where I have a tire iron right here really close and I'm gonna have a tire iron over here really close and see how I'm lifting it back up to make it easier to get on to get it underneath towards the rim and as I bring it over so what I'm gonna do I have the two tire irons here I'm going to stick this tire in here and I'm going to help push the rim lock in. And so as I fold these over, right when the tire starts to go in, the rim lock will actually pop up quite easily and go in just like that. And now I am done. Now I take my rims not getting scratched at all. When I do this, uh, like that, out. These come off pretty easy. You just spin them and turn them out like so, like so, like so, like that. And now I'm checking to make sure that my bead's popping up and with that big, thick, fat mousse, my bead has popped up and that calls for a celebratory sip of Coors Light. No, I'm not gonna, even gonna have it. Uh, I would tighten my rim lock now down and I'm ready to go riding. If I needed to pop the bead, I could pump air into that valve core. And there you have it. Number two, all done. So with that, hopefully we'll see you out on the trail running mooses. Cheers.